Alright, so here's a tutorial on basically how to disassemble and clean the joystick out of a Rift S controller, a touch controller. Um, this is the left controller right here, but you can do it with both, and it's pretty much the same way. Alright, so basically first, you gotta take off this cover, take out the battery. And there's this label right here, so you have to scrape that off. Oh yeah, so the tools you'll need are a pry tool, tweezers, I am a screwdriver, specifically with a um, T5 hex bit. Uh, you probably can't see it, but that's... It's, um... It's five, or six prong, like, uh, screw, screwdriver bit. <coughs> Alright, so basically first you have to use this pry tool or something else to scrape off this label, this battery label inside here. Because this is covering two screws. And then you can just peel it off once it's off a bit. see that right there. Then you don't really need to leave this intact because it can, uh, it's not necessary. Yeah, you just take it off, put it somewhere if you want. And there's two screws right at the bottom of here, if you can see them. Then we get a better light. Alright, if you can see right there, <clears throat> there are two screws, they're at a, big of a bit of an angle from the top, so you'll have to use a screwdriver and angle it slightly, about right there, and then you can unscrew them. You have to press pretty hard into it, because if you strip these, then they're pretty much never coming out. There's one, then just... Put them somewhere you can find them. It's best to use a magnetic screwdriver tip too, so you can just take them out easily. Alright, and the next step is to take this back part off right here with the trigger, or this uh, grip right here. Um, before I've tried taking it off from the sides right here, but that's the hardest way to do it pretty much, so if you use this part right here, it's usually the easiest. So just stick the pry tool below that, if you can, and then just pull up, and the whole thing comes off. Then you can use it over here too. And it just comes straight off like that. So there are no cords attached to that, which is nice, because otherwise you'd probably break them taking it off. Well, there's that. Alright, this next step is probably the hardest part. It's taking off this whole ring right here. Mine is already cracked, which I can't really do anything about. I do have an extra ring, but it's for a right controller. I'm not sure if they're exactly the same, but yeah, anyway. Usually, just unscrew these. There's two screws holding this in. They're right here and here. Um, yeah, so just unscrew these two. All the screws are the same size, so it doesn't matter which ones go where. Except if you put the if you put screws where they're not supposed to, but without putting something else on first, it can go straight into the board. And I know that from experience. I had to buy a new board for this once. It was really quite annoying. Alright, but once those two screws are out, you have to take this pry tool and get these sensors out um, from underneath this ring right here. 
there's a small line in between of them in between them that uh, connects them if you can see in, in the middle it's pretty hard to see but there's two separate parts so just use the pry tool and separate it from the main area I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You've got to kind of stretch it a bit. They shouldn't break too easily because they're pretty, um, pretty bendable. All right, now those up, those are both up. So now you can bend them. Just bend them in towards each other, and then you can pull the ring up above the trigger. You have to hold these as you're doing this, so it's a little difficult. But yeah, so this part just comes right off of above it, like right above it. Um, yeah, so it just comes off like that, and then you can release these sensors, like that, see they're two separate parts, and then that's off. Another side note, be careful with these thin cables, because if these break, you'll probably have to buy new sensors, well, you'll probably have to buy a new controller, because those are kind of hard to get, but you can buy like a... Uh, four parts one and replace them, but you probably have to replace this whole uh, ring right here but um, But yeah, when you're prying it open just uh, try to be careful with where it is There's no sensors right here, but there are some right here. So maybe go from the bottom instead on on this side All right All right, the next step is to remove this front panel right here to do that, there are two screws right here and here. Oh yeah, so these are the screws that went on the uh, the ring right here. So do not put screws inside of here without the ring on because they'll go straight into the board. And then you'll have a very bad time. So to take this front panel off, take these two screws out. I think it's chirping a little bit. Alright, there we go. My hands are shaking a little bit, huh? Alright, so... Um, if you... These buttons will fall out when you take this off, so just remember... Unless you turn it upside down, but... I guess just look up the diagram if you don't know which ones are which. So for this, why it goes on top. But you can just take it off upside down and it shouldn't fall out. It goes over there. Alright, now here, here's the main board right there. Alright. So the next step is to take this piece off right here, this front piece that holds the battery. This part can be pretty annoying. The first time I did this, I did it out of order, and I ripped this cable. I like the um, the part that went on the board. I was able to glue it back in, but it was it pretty much destroyed it. So first, take up that cable because otherwise you'll break it. It's this white one right here. You can just use your finger, I think. Yeah, it just it just lifts straight up. So. Yeah, because otherwise it'll pull downwards, and that's the wrong way to pull it. Alright, next, you take out these one, two, three, four screws down here. This fourth one, this is an annoying one because it holds the bottom connector for the battery. And um, it there's a magnet like right next to it, so this part's just going to go like flying straight towards it. So it's kind of annoying, but... 
just remove these screws. Third one of there. Yeah, it's getting stuck in that magnet right there. And that fourth one. Sorry, my hands are shaking a bit. All right, those screws are out. Um, there is one more screw, actually. It's on this side, right here. Let's just take that one out. All right. All right, and next you take this piece off right here. And this is the annoying part because the magnet's right there. So if you take this out, there, there's a better, or the magnet came out actually. Um, there is a dot on the magnet that says which spot's supposed to go which direction, but it's not secured in there at all. So you're gonna have to, like, when you put it back in, it's gonna be really annoying. Um, also, this piece isn't even connected to this battery part. So you'll have to figure that out later too. I mean, this part is going to be on the outside, the part with the cord on it. Also, these cords are extremely fragile, <laughs> which I also know from experience. All right, so next you take out this black piece right here. Just like that. Magnet is still connecting to everything. I'm just going to separate the magnet from it. Put it right there. As you can see there's a dot on there right there. So that dot will not be visible to the um, part where the, the outside battery case goes on. Alright, now here's this part right here. Alright, so from here on, if you want to disconnect the vibrator, um, the vibrator motor, you can just disconnect this wire right here. Um, <clears throat> you don't need to though. Um, there is a sensor, or I believe this is the antenna wire right here, um, that is just connected straight down onto this board. Full focus. Hmm. Well, but yeah, you just take it straight up, and yeah, that's pretty easy to connect once you need to. <clears throat> but from here, if you want to clean the joystick, there are three screws to take the joystick up. For me right now, my con uh, the controller joystick is drifting quite a lot, so if I want to clean it, I can take it apart, which I'm going to do right now. Or if you want to replace the board, there's one screw here, um, and then the rest are just on the, on the joystick right there. Plus there is a cable that goes right here into the board from the from the bottom, so you'll have to connect that, and that's really, that's a little hard to, that's a little tricky to do. So I'm going to disconnect the joystick. There's three screws.
also one other thing um this uh trigger right here is underneath the board like the spring is underneath the board right here so um or this uh this hinge right here can sometimes come out so if that comes out you'll probably have to remove the board and then like put the spring back down under there which I can show you later alright so here's the joystick right here oh yeah so for the joystick once you remove those screws you also have to take out the board anyway so I'll be doing that right now because the connector cable is right below the uh, right below the board So there's one screw right there at the bottom. All right. Um, this might make it a little easier if you get like two pieces of tape and just like stick them over where the um, where the hinge goes right here, then the hinge won't fall out which is a little annoying to put back in, so just if you want to put tape over both those silver parts then it won't fall out. This tape isn't sticky at all, whatever. Alright, next you remove the system board. It just comes up like that once all the screws are out. And it is on this cable right here, so it'll come out kind of at it sideways like that. <coughs> And this joystick is connected with this cable right here onto the board. So what you'll have to do is either use your fingernail or something small to hold on, I need to focus this. Hmm. Um well, one second. As you can see, that cable is connected like that. So you have to remove it, pulling those black things. Which oh, I can't even do. All right, just use tweezers or something. I don't, I don't care. So just pull both sides out. And then the cable will be loose. And then you can take the joystick out like that. And that can just go straight back in. And you can just push them back and then it'll be secure. Alright. Alright, next you have to disassemble this joystick and then reassemble it while trying not to like break it. You'll probably need like needle nose pliers for this. Uh, oh yeah, so I'll go get some. Alright, so these parts are metal right here on the sides. So they might not bend all the way back. Um, but for our purposes, they should bend far enough to keep it in, in place at least. So, yeah, you pretty much have to bend uh, this back, this back, this back, and this back. And then... Uh, these two, sil the silver thing right here, and this, which are basically latches that are on plastic parts right there. So you have to bend all of those back, and then you'll be able to take it apart. Alright, um, I'm probably going to do this badly, but I'll just show it on camera anyway. So let me try using this first. This thing is really hard, like, this part's a little annoying to get back together, like, working. Okay, there's that. I might not actually need the needle nose pliers, who knows. Actually, so okay, it focuses. All right. Um, 
Yeah, first you have to get this metal bit up first, and then, oh yeah, there we go. Then just bend it backwards. Oh, that's not focused at all, is it? Yeah, just bend these tabs backwards. Also be careful when you open this back up because there are a lot of tiny parts and it's going to be hard to know where they go. There we go, there's that part. Also people don't really sell individual parts for this thing, they just sell like, at like the whole controller for parts, which is kind of unfortunate, but like you can't just buy a joystick like this. At least not that I know of. There's that. Last one. There. Now this might not come up immediately, and it'll still need to be bent a little bit more. There we go. Alright, now flip it upside down before this metal part comes all the way off. And then just take it off gently. Right there, you see all the sensors. And these are all the tiny parts. All of this stuff kind of comes out. Um, yeah, I think there's supposed to be something there, uh, hmm, maybe not, alright, so basically now what you have to do is you have to clean these sensors right here, then to clean the connectors right here, like either with a brush or a q-tip, and then um, what helps is you can stretch, the, stretch this spring out right here, which kind of wears down over time and gets compressed. And also stretch these these connectors right here, so that they're uh, they're sticking out a bit more. This is usually a temporary fix, unfortunately, because these joysticks don't last forever, especially depending how hard you're using them. But if you can stretch this out. Like so, and try to keep the bottom and top parallel so that they're even like that. And then, I don't know if you can see that, there we go. All right, there's that. And then you can get Q-tips, maybe rubbing alcohol if you want, and then clean the centers right here. All right, so just get some rubbing alcohol or something. And clean this right here. You can even take this whole part off if you want. And then just dry it off. All right, and once you're done cleaning that, you can stretch the prongs on the other section right here. So right here there's prongs on that connect to the sensors right there. So you can use the tweezers for this. So just kind of push them together a bit. Don't use too much force because otherwise everything will go flying or you'll break it. That is not focusing at all, huh? There you go. Alright, and then you can also use a Q-tip to clean the tips of these too. Though I'm not sure how effective that is. You'd think with technology today, people would have like, focusing cameras that worked properly. And this is like, a new Samsung phone. 
don't know. All right. So that's done. Now we can reassemble the actual joystick. So basically, first you take this, and then you take this part, and then you figure out which way they went, which is whichever way the uh, connectors on here went, like the uh, what's it called? These uh, latches right here which I believe is right here, so these latches go right here, so I'll just put it back on like that actually no, what, yeah, I'm inverting you need the spring first, obviously so put this put the spring on like that and then you can do that it's not focusing at all well it may be harder to put on because the spring is more stretched out, but that's normal. <coughs> there you go. And then just try to stretch these metal parts back just to keep it in place. Just focus. Alright. Now you can put all these latches back in place, just bend them. It's a little harder because these do not go on right. So once you bend this metal a certain way, it just doesn't want to go all the way back. And you can try using these little pliers, I suppose, to connect, just push these back on all the way, just to bend those metal parts back. Alright, now it should feel like it's a better joystick at least, and at least the sensor shouldn't be drifting as much, or hopefully not at all, but it's usually never perfect. I may have gone a bit overboard on how much I <laughs> stretched that spring though, because it's... Well, wait a minute. There we go. Alright, next make sure the um, screw holes are aligned like that and not turn some other direction because that kind of rotates freely on there. Alright, so then when you are when you have this, you've got to stick it back inside this um, port right here. And also you have to keep the screw holes on the, on the correct side of the board, which is also kind of annoying. can't even get this in camera. Alright, so keep the white screw holes right there on the top of the board, and then you have to keep this cable on the bottom of the board, and you should be able to just shove it back in there, and then you have to close this um, black lever as you do that, so that it keeps it in place. It's not a lever, but I mean... Right, like that. So then it should be secured and the cable should be connected. Alright. Also, if you want to replace the board in the future, like in case it like completely explodes, there is a cable right here. 
that focuses right there that you would need to disconnect and reconnect and that's just with a lever right here or not a lever just a um, clamp or whatever you want to call it that so you just open it like that and then it will come out like that like so and then now I have to put it back in which is also annoying so you can just try sticking it back on there if it focuses so just stick it back in there and then you can close that again and just make sure that that white line right there's a white line right there make sure it's straight across otherwise it might disconnect or might not connect properly all right now we can put everything back together all right so the first step of this is this spring right here as you can see that is the spring for the trigger and that you have to stretch down as you put the board back on because it it uses the tension like of the board as its tension i suppose so to do that what i usually do is i use a pry tool and i stick it above the trigger like through this hole right here if i can find it as you can see and then you can stretch it back like that as you put the board in <clears throat> so just stick it in like that and then just put the board right on top like that and then just push the board down and you can take out the tool and then it should have tension like that if it doesn't have tension then you'll have to uh, put the pick the board back up and do it again <clears throat> but now you can secure the joystick and the board with the screws so there are four screws right there let me just stick that thing in the right position. I'll be right back. Alright, so those screw holes are in the correct position. So that one is above that golden plate right there. <clears throat> and the other holes are in the right position as well. So grab four screw, or just one screw for now. Well, let me zoom out. All right, so I like to put the first screw in that hole right there because it's kind of the hardest one to keep in place. Don't tighten them too much because these can strip easily. If you want to take it apart again, it might be difficult. <coughs> All right, and then the other four, as usual. Also, when you put this board back on, make sure this cord is not under the board because otherwise it'll get stuck and you'll probably have to take it up again. So, Alright, and then the last screw hole is right down at the bottom, right there. And the, these uh, sensors are kind of going to get in the way, so... There you go. Uh, yeah, so something did actually end up happening, and uh, I did have to take this up again because this didn't have any tension, but now it does. And now, it do now that it does, you can take the tape off because it won't come off easily. The hinge won't come out, at least. Alright, but now we can put it back together the rest of the way. Alright, so first of all, you're going to want to put this cable back in place. So it has a little, uh, little holder for it right there. Hold on.
So there is a little thing it goes into. And there is this circle right here that it goes onto. And it will it'll probably click when you put it down when you push it down onto there, so just It's sometimes easier to do with your fingernail. But you have to make sure it's aligned right first. Alright, there you go. There's a click. And now that is on there correctly. As you can see. Also, it kind of routes through this little uh, path right here. So make sure it's flush with that. Alright. Alright, now that that's on, the next step is to put this on again. So, this goes on as normal. Um, these cables are extremely fragile right here, so don't, don't bend them too much if you can help it. So just stick this back on. It'll click like that. Then this cable goes back on where it was before, and, you, and again you just push it down. There's no sliding involved; it's just straight up and down. And you just push it down until it's flush, really. All right. All right. This next part's pretty annoying because it has a magnet. So this part and this part go together, and the magnet goes right in that little hole right there right in there right there and the part that is visible in that hole will have no dot so you have to make sure the dot is facing the other way otherwise the, like the polarity will be reversed or not uh, you know I don't even know if the dot is facing upwards so you just kind of stick it in there and hope it went in the right way. Um, Alright, so you can see the dot on top of there. So that is the correct way. And next, you have to put this and the metal uh, battery connector together. Um, with the magnet so close to this, it's kind of annoying. Uh, but this part goes like this like that and then this goes outside of it like that if I can well this part's really annoying actually I might have it backwards no that's the right way Alright, so just stick that on there. Oh, dang it. This magnet is the most annoying thing in this whole thing. Like, they couldn't just super glue it in there or something. It just has to be sitting there loose. I mean, I could super glue it in there, but... I don't know. Alright. So, take... Let's... Try this again. Uh, oh, yeah, another thing you can do is stick something metal on the magnet through this hole, and then it'll kind of stay there. <laughs> At least it should. Alright. Now that that's on there, you gotta screw it in. Wait a minute, is this cord supposed to go behind it? Uh, it doesn't matter. Just stick it in there. <coughs> Alright, put these screws in while holding this down, otherwise it'll, the magnet will freak out. Stick that screw in there. There we go. Cool. And then just put the other three screws in there. There are four, actually. There's one more. This magnet is really messing with everything. 
I can't even put the, okay, you know what, just put, get tweezers and just stick them at, like just stick the screw in there, and then you can rotate it later. <coughs> like that. There we go. And then put the screw back in this one, this right here, this one, and this one right here. I'll just show it on camera anyway, but... There's that one. And then last one for that part, right there. Alright, so I do have two of these rings, so, and this one's for the right controller, but I'm pretty sure they're the same, so I'm just going to use this one since it's not cracked. And this one is very cracked, so yeah, I'll just use this one. Before you put the ring on, though, you have to put this, this face back on, right here. And then if the keys are out of it, you can just look at where they're supposed to go on the picture of the controller. And then just stick it back on here like that. And then you just put the screws in right here and here. On the top ones, not the bottom ones. Because otherwise you'll have very serious issues. Alright, so this face actually does have a, um... If you can see, it's like a little tab right here so you have to put that on first actually so all right so this does have a tab on it right here so you have to put this down right here and then stick it so this is this is below this um the handle part right here and then you just stick it back on like straight It should just go straight back on like that but yeah there's a tab right here so it has to go under this piece right here and then yeah you just put screws right here and here make sure they're the top ones Alright, All right, next step is putting the ring back on, and this part is pretty hard again. And then you've got to stick this over the trigger, and up, like so, like that. As you can see. It's actually fitting pretty well. Right, so one of these tab, one of these sensor tabs is going to be kind of out from the other ones. So you can kind of just put the pry tool in between them, and then like shoehorn it into the other side. So. go. Now they're straight together. Like so. 
next step is to put the screws in the ring right here. One or two of them. Screw one in there. The other one goes there. Alright. Then the next step is to put this part on here. So this kind of slides upwards. So like that part goes in first. Then that. And just snap everything together. And that part is on. And then there are the two screws that we started with. Remember they go on a downward angle. Like that. Shaking a lot. Like that. Those screws are in. And then if you want to, you can put this thing back on. I mean, it has labels and stuff in there. It really doesn't matter. Um, yeah, just, if you can line it up, great. It's not necessary at all. Um, it's probably not going to go on flat. Just me some bumps or something, but. I mean, yeah, whatever. Good enough, I guess. All right. Next, put the battery back in. And make sure that light turns on, because otherwise it's not good. Um, hold on a second. Alright, and then just, I guess, test it, make sure it works, because otherwise this will be a long day. Which, it does work, which I'm glad. And then, uh, if your battery falls out while you're playing Beat Saber, just stick a piece of paper in here, because then the battery will, like, kind of stay in there better and not, like, disconnect while you're playing. Then just put the cover back on, and that's about it. Um... So if you do end up breaking the board, or you want to replace the board, you can buy a four parts uh, piece on eBay. Um, I got one for 20 bucks to fix my right controller because the board got a screw through it, which I don't know how that happened. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if there are any for sale right now, but I mean, it's, it's a lot cheaper than buying a new one for $100 or whatnot. But... Yeah, that's about it. If you want to see me disassemble the, uh, like the actual Rift S, I can do that too. Um, it has a lot more like uh, glue or like adhesive kind of thing in there, but um, I mean, yeah, you can take it apart, but there's not really any parts for it. So, I mean, there's no lenses for sale or anything. So, I mean, if you want to see me take it apart, that, I mean, I can do that. The only video out there right now that I know of is in German. And there's one of them, so, I mean, I could make a video about it. But yeah, if you like it, if you like this kind of video, then I can make more. Or I can just keep playing weird games and upload them. But, you can subscribe if you want, I don't really care. But, if you found it helpful, uh, good for you. <laughs> Alright, thanks.
All right, now one of the last steps is this part, which you guys fit over here. And there are tabs right here and here, which have to go underneath the ring. So this pretty much slides upwards. So it connects up there. No. All right. A little bit off. Connects. Up there. Like that. And then just snap everything together like that. There you go. Wait.